Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. It's Christine. Um, feel free to jump in and ask questions if you are online somehow. Um, you can ask me anything you want. You can also use the chat function and the questions along the side of GoToWebinar if you have any questions. Um, I had a lovely PowerPoint presentation to show you, but for some reason my computer is not working very well at all. So I will just talk you through the rubric um, and answer any questions as we go along. So again, feel free to jump in and ask questions. You can raise your hand, you can talk, uh, whatever you'd like to do. So thank you all for agreeing to review us for us this year. Um, we're doing it a little bit differently this year. If you were a reviewer last year, you'll notice some changes. Um, we've got four review panels this year um, instead of 10, which we had last year. And we grouped proposals geographically as much as possible because this year we actually have to say no to people. We have a feeling that there will be some worthy projects that um, we would, might otherwise fund, but we received 77 letters of intent this year and invited 52 people to submit proposals. Um, based on our budget, we will probably have to say no to six or seven proposals for sure. So we wanted our review teams to have a larger number of proposals to review so that there was a better comparison for ranking um, and things like that. So um, we've got four regions. We've got Northeastern Ohio. We have Southwestern Ohio. We have Eastern Ohio. And we have a statewide slash large regional group of organizations that will be doing um, projects that will affect either the state or more than five or six counties. So that's kind of how we grouped them. So when we get together in August to talk about the proposals, um, you'll sit with the people in your group um, and discuss the group of proposals that you have. Um, the other thing we're doing a little bit differently this year is um, we are going to be offering a lot of technical assistance to the grantees to help them implement these communications projects. and. Um, we're doing a couple webinars. We did some webinars during the proposal stage, and we'll be doing some more later this year and into next year so that people can learn to use Facebook. They can learn to use, oh, you guys cannot hear me. I have no idea why the audio keeps cutting out. Um, is that better, or is it still? Hopefully that's better. Can you guys hear me at all? Hello? Okay, I'm going to assume that's better. I don't see anyone saying that it's not. Um, if you have problems with it again, let me know, and I can switch over to the phone. I'm using a headset and microphone because the sound quality in our speakerphones is not very good. Okay. All right, so we'll be doing, um, we have four, we have four um, teams, and they'll be reviewing 12 proposals each. There's actually one region that only has 11. We received 47 proposals total. And again, we'll probably have to say no to six or seven of those um, proposals for sure. So what we'll do is we will combine the, um, will combine your rubric scores, and that's what I'll go over in a few minutes, with an in-person discussion. And what that will do is that will allow um, for proposals that might not have scored highly, uh, for you to bring your regional knowledge and your geographic knowledge, your knowledge of the organizations, your knowledge of the, um, your knowledge of the uh, region that you're in, um, all of that, it will, uh, it will allow you to say, you know, yeah, this organization does not, uh, may not have written a really good proposal, 
um, they're a smaller organization, they don't have an experienced proposal writer, but we know in our community they do excellent work. And so the in-person meeting gives you a chance to, um, to account for that, to give some context to the scores, to provide an extra layer of information, um, and, and that. So we'll be using both the rubric scores and the in-person um, conversations to determine which proposals we recommend our board will fund. So we'll take your rubric scores, the results of the in-person meeting, Health Path staff will give that information to our board of directors and they will make the ultimate decision on what gets funded. Um, if you have any questions about the process or how that all is going to work, uh, feel free to either ask now or let me know um, at another time. I'd be happy to uh, answer the question um, for you and kind of explain how that works. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so this year we have four different rubrics. We've created one for each of the four regions and um, they're all exactly the same except for the top part. So what we're going to ask you to do is, and we'll send this to you both um, the link to the online file and a link to a PDF that you can fill out offline, save it to your local computer, and then submit it at the end if you choose to. So let's see. So in the eastern region, um, and you will see your name in your own regions when you get your copy of this, you'll see um, who you are. You'll see your name on here. So I'm Christine. The proposals in the eastern region are listed here, and I'll just pick one. And then basically you'll go through the steps of the proposal. Um, these sections here match what's in the proposal. So the first part of the proposal, there'll be a goal. What does the applicant want to do? Um, you'll rate that on a scale sort of of one to seven, which is how we have this set up. Um, do they clearly define the community issues? Do they explain how storytelling will help them deal with these issues? So we'll go through each section of the proposal. You'll go through each section of the proposal and answer these questions. Um, we have questions on the audience analysis. So does the proposal define the audience? Um, and then this section starts to have questions that link back to the other sections. Because these are communication projects, what, we're, what we want to do is make sure that the audience aligns with the goal. Okay? Does what the applicant hope the audience will do with the project align with the goal? You know, if the project is to increase awareness of services in a community, for example, and the applicant says, oh, we hope that the audience will call us to make an appointment. That aligns with the goal. That's an example of something that aligns with the goal. They want to increase awareness of what's going on in the community. They hope that through these storytelling projects, their um, audience will call and make appointments or will interact with the agency. So we want to look and see if these proposals flow logically from beginning to end. Okay? So you'll go through each section of the proposal, rank them one through seven, um, and you can see, you know, here's the stories and storytellers. There's a couple more questions on there because we want to make sure, especially um, this one, the stories align with the selected health path focus area. So we have three focus areas in our um, that we're that we're funding in. One of them is prevention of family violence. So do the stories, if they selected that this was a family violence prevention project, do the stories that they want to share align with issues around family violence prevention? If they chose preventive oral health care, do the stories that they're sharing align with that focus area? Um, family violence prevention and um, preventive oral health care are pretty easy to figure out. I think it's pretty clear to see how those align. Where sometimes there's some confusion is if the proposal is for strengthening Ohio Safety Net. So the things that we fund within strengthening Ohio Safety Net are access to the health care safety net, and in particular, workforce development and helping FQHCs um, 
get capital so they can get equipment, so they can renovate their buildings, um, and that kind of thing. So those are the two areas that we mostly fund in strengthening Ohio's safety net. We also, though, will consider projects that increase access to health care. That could be mental health care, it could be primary care, it could be um, other types of behavioral health care, specialty care. Um, but the top issues that we fund within Strengthening Ohio's Safety Net are health care workforce development and increasing access to primary care and the, safe, and the health care safety net. So if you have questions as you're going through your proposals and you're not sure how well something might align, feel free to shoot me a question and ask me. You can call, you can email, um, or you can also um, not answer that question if you're not sure. You can leave any of these blank. They're not required. Um, so answer as many as you can, um, but you do not have to answer all of them. Um, we're going to combine the scores and use them to help us determine which proposals that we're going to talk about. And I will um, go into that in a little bit. Okay. We also asked um, the, the applicants to talk about which communication channels would they use. Are they going to use Facebook, a website, in-person presentations? What kinds of things are they going to do? Um, and do those channels make sense? If their primary audience is young children and they directly want to talk to young children, Facebook might not be the right avenue because Facebook has an age limit of 13. So while you can get on Facebook if you're under 13, the majority of the Facebook audience is older than 13. So that wouldn't make sense as the best channel to reach children using Facebook or social media because they're a little bit too young for those tools. Another section that um, causes some confusion sometimes is the community partner section. Uh, we do ask the applicants to talk about um, or to list which community partners they'll be working with for this project. Not all projects will have community partners. Sometimes an organization will be able to complete their project without using any community partners, and they'll say that in their proposal. So what we'd like you to do in this section is look at the list that they provided and see if these are the right types of organizations for the project. If it's a project that's going to be working with schools, obviously the schools should be on that list of community partners. We also want to see if the partners submitted a letter of commitment. Now this is not, this is not a letter of support. What we are really looking for is commitment. We're looking for a letter that clearly says that the partner understands what is expected of them, whether that's in-kind support, whether that is um, financial support, whether that is access to patients or staff to do part of the project. We want those letters of commitment to show a clear understanding of what those expectations are. So again, if someone doesn't include a letter of commitment um, or if they don't have any partners, then you can ignore most of the section. Um, but for the letters of commitment that are included, Please look at them not just for support, but to make sure that the partners truly understand what they'll be contributing to with the project. We asked a couple questions on the proposal about time. Actually, one question about a timeline. Um, we didn't expect the grantees to have a full communications plan prepared at the time of the proposal because part of this year's Community Connections program is that communications capacity building. So we wanted a general timeline to see how, you know, when they'll start recruiting their storytellers, when they'll share their stories, so we can get a general idea of how the project is going to progress. Um, and that's one thing we do want you to look at as well, is does the timeline seem complete, realistic, and achievable? You know, if they said, well, it'll take us two weeks to, um, if it takes two weeks, to um, recruit storytellers, that might be not be enough time. You know, it could be really difficult to find patients in your um, find patients in your practice. To sorry about the audio problems. I'm not sure. I've tested this microphone before, and I don't know what's going on. But um, I will try to 
um, fix that as we go along if I can find another way to do it. Um, so does the timeline seem achievable? If they're, do they have enough time to recruit storytellers? Do they have enough time to share their messages with the audience? Um, that is, uh, you know, that's something that we'd like you to consider. If you aren't sure if the timeline is realistic, um, then that's fine too. You don't have to answer those questions if you're not if you're not sure if the timeline seems realistic, or if you have any questions on their timeline, you can use the comment section to um, to do that. So let me. I'm just looking through the questions real quick to see if I can find an easy answer to the um, to the sound problem, and I don't. Not really, like I said, I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, okay, the next section that we're um, that we have in here is the budget section, and you do not need to be a financial um, specialist to look at the budget. You don't need to be an accountant. We're not going to ask you to make sure everything adds up right. We'll take care of that. Um, we're not going to ask you to, um, you know think, oh, is this the right way they should be spending their money? What we're really looking for is, is anything missing? You know, so for example, if they said in their project that they would be developing a website, is there money in the budget to develop that website? Um, is there money in the budget to maintain the website? You know, if they're going to be using Facebook, do they have money in the budget for someone to go out and post on Facebook? Um, if they want to do videography, or um, photos, do they have a camera person, do they have a videographer, do they have editing software. So we're just sort of looking to see if things, if everything in the budget aligns with what they said they wanted to do in the proposal. We also want to know from your perspective if those costs seem reasonable. Maybe you've done a similar project um, and so you have an idea about how much that will cost. Or maybe you know from, you know, in your particular geographic region that things might cost a little bit more or a little bit less than they might in other parts of the state. Um, feel free to add any feedback on that. And then also just in general, does the budget make sense? Um, is it something that, um, you know, their, their costs seem to be aligned, everything seems to be, you know, to, to jive with the rest of the proposal. So that's what we're looking for from you in the budget section. There are some optional questions in the budget section. For example, we um, if they uh, said that they would use some of the money on equipment, we want to know why the equipment's essential and how it will be used after the project is over. So some organizations will answer that question. Um, some organizations will also list any in-kind support that they're receiving. And we want to know if they list that, if it's clear who's providing the in-kind support, what they're providing, and about how much that will be. And then if they're providing, if someone externally is providing in-kind support, does the letter of commitment indicate that in-kind support? It's something that we just want to be aware of so that we can go back to the organizations and say, if they start to have problems, they have that letter of commitment saying, our, this organization said, yes, we will, we will provide these things. It just gives the grantees and us some information about who promised what so we can help um, solve any problems that might crop up. All right, the last three questions on the, actually four questions on the uh, proposal, on the rubric, are required. These are the, besides giving us your name and indicating which proposal you're reviewing, these are the only four questions you have to answer on this proposal. And these are the ones that are going to help us sort of rank the proposals um, before the in-person meeting and give us some information about um, overall how the proposals stack up against each other across all four regions. So the first question of the, the first required question is does the whole proposal flow logically and is it connected? You know, does everything from the goal to the audience to the stories and storytellers to the communication channels and how they'll share these stories, do all of those things flow logically through the entire proposal? Okay. The second question that we want you to answer 
is does the storytelling project advance issues important to Health Path related to our three focus areas? Okay. So this is another question about alignment to our focus areas. You know, will this help advance the issues of prevention of family violence, preventive oral health, and strengthening Ohio Safety Net? The second to the last question, would you recommend that Health Path fund this organization for a storytelling project? Okay. And we have five, five levels of answer for that. Okay. So this, again, please do not use Please do not compare each proposal to each other at this point. We want you to look at these proposals and score them on the rubric based on their own individual merits. Um, so when you consider each proposal individually, consider, would I recommend Health Path fund this project? Definitely, very likely, probably, doubtful, and no and then give a little bit of information about why you answered that way. So that again, when we come together as a full group, we'll um, provide the comments to you, um, we'll provide a summary of the scores for each of the proposals so you can see what other people were thinking about. Um, the other reason why we're doing that is not everyone will be able to attend that in-person meeting and we understand that and so having your comments and your scores ahead of time will help us make sure that your feedback um, is provided. And that is the end of the rubric. Um, it is five pages if you look at it online. I think it's probably about the same if you look at the PDF. Um, and really it's it's that long because online because we wanted to break it up into chunks. Um, it's sometimes easier to fill these out if you're going through smaller chunks rather than scrolling through um, a whole page. You can um, go back and look at your um, other answers if you want to. Um, you can kind of go back and forth. And then the very last step would be to submit your answers. We will get all of the answers, whether you submit online through the rubric or if you use the PDF version. Um, as long as you're connected to the internet when you hit submit on the PDF version, all of those answers will come to us through our forms database and we'll be able to see um, we'll be able to see all of your all of your answers and comments. And prior to the in-person meeting that we'll be having in August, we will send you um, a list of the comments and score summaries from your region. At that in-person meeting, we'll also give you some guidance around how many proposals we can fund um, once we look at the, the total sort of the total cost of the 47 proposals that came in and the amount of money we have in our budget. Um, and we'll also provide lunch that day. So we'll probably do it in the middle of the day uh, because it is, um, because it is, uh, we have people coming from all over the state. We'll probably run it from 10 to 2, um, either on August 11th, 12th, or 14th. Um, Claudia asked about the timing of the review process. So, you will be receiving your packet of proposals either tomorrow or Friday. We're going to email them to you. Um, we're doing it all electronically. If you prefer paper copies, we can mail those to you. Just send me an email and let me know that you would like a paper copy. Um, and we'd be happy to mail a packet out to you. Um, but we are doing, um, we are doing them electronically. Hello? Can you guys hear me? Hopefully again. Somehow the system muted me and I'm not sure how it did that because I'm the only organizer on the call. So I apologize for that. I'm not really sure what went on. Um, but I should be back now. Okay, so timing the review process. Um, we will get you all of your proposals this week, um, either tomorrow or Friday. We actually have them all queued up and ready to go. Um, we wanted to add a link to this recording 
um, so that you had that. Um, and for the people who couldn't join us today, am I gone again? Um, I think um, I apologize for the problems again. I tested this yesterday and everything worked fine. So I don't know if there's a problem with our Wi-Fi today or something else is going on. Um, so you'll get all your proposals tomorrow or Friday. Um, you'll receive a zip file with your 12 PDFs inside of it and also a link, a PDF copy of the rubric and there will be a link to the online rubric as well in the email. Um, we need scores back from you by Friday, August 1st. So that gives you, I believe, about five weeks to review the 12 proposals um, and get us comments back. If you are going on vacation or you have um, some issues with that timeline, please let me know and we can see how we can adjust it a little bit. Um, we picked August 1st because that gives us that following week to compile everyone's comments and um, get all the scores compiled and rank the proposals that are coming in prior to the in-person session on August 11th, 12th, or 14th. So proposals come out tomorrow or Friday. We need all your scores back by August 1st. And then we'll be meeting in person in Columbus sometime the week of August 11th. And it will either be Monday, Tuesday, or Friday of that week, or Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday of that week. Um, next week or probably the week after, I will send out a little doodle poll to find out which days and times work better for everyone. And we'll pick the one that the most people can attend. Um, I understand that we are asking everyone to go to Columbus this year. Um, last year, we did the proposal review sessions around the state. We did 10 of them all around Ohio. But this year, again, because we wanted to have more proposals in a group. So when you, you know, last year, I think each proposal review committee maybe did six or seven. And so if we're looking at six or seven and you have to rank them, um, that doesn't give you a lot of flexibility. So that's why we wanted to give everybody at least 10 to 12 proposals so that you had more of your group to compare to um, to help you make those funding decisions. Um, if you have trouble getting to Columbus that day, if you want to participate by phone, um, or you want to find out who else is coming from your area to set up carpools and things like that, please let me know and I'd be happy to make those connections. Um, we don't have a location set yet because we're not sure where or when it's going to be, um, but I will get that out, information out to you as soon as I can, um, hopefully by mid-July. Um, so that is the timing of the process. Are there any other questions that anybody has? Anyone use the question box? I don't know if I can unmute you if that will work. It may cause more problems than it's worth. Any other questions? No? Okay, well, if there aren't any other questions or if you have some that come up later, um, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email. I think you guys all know how to find me um, and my information will be included in the um, in the information that's sent out. Tara Bahannon is going to send those out on my behalf, but it will have my phone number and email address um, in the in the email. One thing I did want to mention, I know we have a number of people who submitted proposals this year who are also reviewing. That is great. We welcome you. You will not be um, you will not be reviewing your own proposal, nor will you be in a group that's reviewing your proposal, just so you know. Um, when you see the assignments, if you're wondering, well, I live in Dayton, why am I in southwestern Ohio? It's probably because you had a conflict um, being in Dayton. What you will notice when you get the proposals is that they're not going to look exactly like the one that you submitted for your own organization. Um, we had some information that was optional to answer on the proposals. If people, if nothing had changed organizationally in the last 60 days, there were a number of questions about executive director, um, organization address, description, all of those things that um, we did not include 
in the um, proposals that you will be reviewing. We also took out information about organizational budget overall, 501c3 status, and things like that because we wanted to keep your copies of the proposals as short as possible and really just give you the information that you need to know. So when you see your proposals, when you get them, the review proposals, it'll have the name of the organization, information about the project, and then it'll jump in um, to the proposal. So if you submitted a proposal this year and you are thinking, hmm, this doesn't look quite the same as what I turned in, that's okay. We got all of your information. We just um, modified it a little bit for the review committee so that they got the information that they needed for the reviews. Um, all right, well, if there are not any other questions, and for those of you that it was coming in and out, in and out, if you have questions about anything that was lost, um, please let me know, um, and I'd be happy to talk to you about it again. And I will double check the recording and see if maybe the recorded copy is coming out just fine, but for some reason, um, with our internet connection, maybe you guys aren't picking up on my voice as well as the system is. So. Hopefully all those problems will not show up in the recording. Um, okay, if there are no other questions, which it doesn't look like there are, um, I think that's it for now. Thank you again so much for volunteering to review the proposals. I really appreciate your time um, and effort on these and your help in making this a really great project. Thank you, and I will be emailing you next week to set updates for our in-person meeting. Bye.